Hey, what's going on, guys? It's everyone's favorite anime and manga podcast, Los Takus. My name is Eric. And I'm JT. And tonight on SWR, we have another weekly SWR. Let's get into it. We got Jujutsu Kaisen and One Piece because that's, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Surprise. No My Hero because it sucked. No, well, it's on break. Uh, it's on break. But uh, yeah, so it's on break. But last week's chapter did. Did it. So it may be two, but it still might be a long conversation. Oh, because, of course. Because of One Piece. As it always is. Like As last, it always the last is. video was. Well, let's get into it with Jujutsu Kaisen. And we left off where it is now Ishigori and Okutsu one on one. Just the last two remaining standing. <laughs> Everybody else is incap- incapacitated, KO'd. It starts off with a little uh, dialogue from the editor so like another editor's note Mm -hmm. basically it's saying like that this is it okutsu is charging up energy in his finger kind of mimicking um not 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 copying yeah but just mimicking um ishigori's curse technique Mm -hmm. so where ishigori his is an innate curse technique where he blasts from his pompadour all okutsu's doing is building up curse energy his finger. And it, there was an editor's note that said that he could only do this when Rika is fully manifested. So only at this moment can he do this. So he's trying to hurry up and build up as much energy as he can to shoot it before yeah. Ishigori does. But right when he's trying to do that, it says, but he looks, Okutsu looks at Ishigori's eyes and it opens his heart, bro. He looks at the fire in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he could see the 400 years of hunger and thirst to satisfy his desire and for the first time he felt okutsu, love <laughs> where okutsu never thought that he would get anything from fighting nothing to gain from fighting at this moment he's all like i got you bro he's like rika let's give it everything we got for this just this once just this once just for this man and 400 years there was a there's another editor note as well that said that even though he's powering up it's still not as strong as yeah ishigori's uh, reuse blasts as as strong as his hadouken is i i did like the fact that it did show his like okutsu's eyes like he was focused too but when he noticed the the look in ishigori's eyes as his eyes opened up like this guy looks like he's enjoying this yeah he went from happy sad boy to happy boy so he's like all right rika just this one time andy <laughs> ah, ah. so the both of their blasts their cursed energy full blasts canceled each other out and then when that happened ishigori is all happy he's like yeah this is it come on okutsu just keep going it's my dessert boy and then rika charges up and blasts him and at that moment Okutsu dashes forward. Yep. And then uh, Ishigori is all like, all right, all right. He's like, hey. And he's seen Okutsu. He's all like, hey, Okutsu, look here, boy. Anything you can do, I can do too. <laughs> bah! He blocks uh, Rika's blast mm-hmm. that was launched at him with his hand. And then Ishigori's monologue, you dine with me during the domain expansion. You're dining with me here now, kid. But I can feel it. You're at your wit's end. You're done. And he goes, Granite Blast. Then it charges up. And in the middle of that, thought of ishigori editor's note okutsu yuta's curse energy is back (laughs) (laughs) it's like on the contrary to what ishigori just said his curse energy is returned he can use his curse technique what we get a close-up of uh okutsu's hand he grasps the air and then we get a wide shot and all we see is the back of okutsu Mm -hmm. and the granite blast from ishigori going up and then we get a mid shot it, looking at Okutsu, and he has warped the, the air, air. <laughs> like Udo. Udo, and then Ishigori is like, "No way, bro! Did he just what? He's like, did he just use Udo's technique? Like how? Like I knew he wasn't just some mere uh, speech user. Yeah. It's like, well, what? When did this happen? And he's trying he to think. Thinking back at that moment, he's so shocked. And usually he's a focused fighter. Yeah. But in this moment, that threw him off. He's like, okay, I knew he wasn't a curse speech user, but I thought him 
and that cursed spirit that was were, his cursed i knew they yeah. wouldn't have the same techniques so that was proven correctly but then how did he copy Uro's? like this is a special technique there yeah. has to be conditions there's no way it can't be that it has no conditions so when did he and at that moment he thought about it he's like when rika bit udo's arm we laughed about it last chapter but apparently it was more important than just a nice little laugh it was so at the at this point do we get to we get to the point on theorizing well how does it actually work does he actually have to ingest somebody's part or maybe just touch them or something yeah just, just Who knows? From, anyways when we learned that his curse technique was copying yeah then i told him well i thought he was a, a prodigy that he could learn everything because he got into it and once he learned something he quickly picks up on it so that's what i thought he copied inumaki's curse speech technique mm -hmm. that he learned it yeah. like from the books he studied and learned it real quick because i don't think rika he's all like hey inumaki bro let me bite your arm a little bit like it's a little nimble he is missing an arm <laughs> now but yeah he used it in the movie and before all yeah. of that happened so i'm not sure because so far that we've seen yuta is full of tricks yeah apparently and that might be he might have tricked them he's like hey let's just pretend like that'll distract him so just bite her arm i'll use her technique so it may not be what you should go to stinking it may or may not be who knows i don't trust you at this yeah. point anymore <laughs> he may be tricking card. him he, he doesn't show he doesn't, his cards yeah. or his full cards so his full hand he doesn't show it so maybe or maybe not what well, ishigori is thinking yeah. he's just theorizing himself <laughs> gig is like then this is how the fans are right now <laughs> you'll never know <laughs> so the next step and in this instance that he's thinking all of this theorizing like how bam the nice yeah the nice missiles which i think it was an udo technique Pro possibly but i think hit him with i think it. it was i think it was the same punch that she did to him when you remember when Ishigori and he blocked it first and then or no he got hit and he was up in the air and then Udo punched him oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was the same skill Dang, that was like three cool. weeks ago and then you just see a, a a white thing on top of Ishigori's head he does, not even the same instant that he gets punched in the stomach by Okutsu you just see him get punched in the Bonked. head <laughs> by Rika Rika just <laughs> but at that moment another editor note the five minutes is up so rika is now not fully manifested yeah. now she's like a shadow blob yeah and ishigori is like oh man come on <laughs> <laughs> another note this punch hurt rika while she was fully manifested yeah so now that she's not fully manifested <laughs> bye bye, -bye. <laughs> i really hope that's what she sounds like <laughs> but like a really creepy like I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so goodbye, Rika. Now it's just the two homeboys. And then Okutsu is still going hard. So he's like, super kick. No, he does super kicks. And oh, uh, Chun-Li, like those fast oh, kicks. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yep, yep. And he's, hey, he should go, he's like, oh, crap. He's just blocking it. Man, the fight sequencing and the art. Oh, bro. It's just, yeah, the, the, the fight sequences. Fighting? Yeah, the, fights, <laughs> the fight sequences are like really, really dope. I was like, oh, bro, this is so cool. This is awesome. So he's just blocking. He's just trying to maneuver his way around the kicks. He's like, nah, bro, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And for one instance, they're just facing each other, posing. And Ishigori is like, just happy. It's <laughs> like, yes, my guy. Yes, this, this is dessert. <laughs> <laughs> and right at that moment when he thinks of that, again, Okatsu grabs him from his sweater and grabs him on the side and holds him down and even makes a crater. That's how hard he's holding him down. <laughs> and Ishigori's like, what the heck are you doing, kid? I really, I really thought he was about to just judo throw him. I'm like, that's been pretty lit. But uh, what happens is, is that he says, yeah, this is the spot. <laughs> he's like, and then he's looking at him. He's like, yeah, we're done. And he's like, what? And I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 So the granite blast that Okutsu reflected, he didn't just uh, like change his direction. No, he actually kind of altered his trajectory. So he just went a loop, a high arc. And Okutsu, I guess he was sensing where it was coming from, yeah. the, the energy. And he just grabbed him in place to where he thinks. He's like, yeah, this is the spot. <laughs> He's like, huh? 
<laughs> and it's Ishigori. And then, uh, another editor's note and has Gay drawing the little chibi characters of them. He's like, well, this is ex this is essentially what happened. And it shows Yuta. It shows the blast, him flipping it, and then that's why he was just kicking him and punching him to get him to that spot, and it held him down really hard. <laughs> and it just yeah, you just get a shot of Ishigori just completely smoked. <laughs> His hair is. <laughs> He's like, yeah, uh, yeah. so to me, it looked like he was still standing. But when I looked at the panel, it looked like he was laying down. It was he, had, he was laying down. Was he laying down? Because yeah. to me, it kind of it would make sense more if he was standing or he's drawing him as he's falling or something. Yeah, know, but well, uh, like I've said before, Gege isn't the best drawer, yeah. but it's good enough. Yeah, if you, well, he's been hit by his blast. He's hit others with bla his blast, granite blast. It took out Udo, took out Kuroroshi, kind of. And then Okutsu finished the job. So it's it's a strong attack, but the fact that it took him out, like if some people find that weird, it makes sense here because they were emptied out. They were they were literally out. fighting with just their fists by this point. Yeah, they were already maxed out, reached the limit of their curse energy. So here they were just yeah all hands, and then he gets hit with his attack that's pretty strong. So that was it. So he he's falls like, down, he's like, and as he's going down, he's all like, "I'm full, bro. Thank you. Thank, thanks for the meal, bro. I'm full." <laughs> and Okutsu's all like, "You're welcome." Goodbye. <laughs> Time to go. So in the span of I don't know how many chapters it's been, he's essentially taking out one, two, three, four, three curse users or three jujutsu sorcerers and one curse. One, I guess special grade curse. And maybe? a special and a special grade curse. The other three, I don't know if they're special grade sorcerers, but they're really, really strong. strong. He's taken, he took all out four Editors enemies. know Ishigori, he said a few chapters ago when we first met him, that Ishigori had the strongest amount of curse energy out of everybody playing currently in the game. <laughs> all of them? <laughs> like Udo, is, it wasn't anything to snuff at either. Her uh -uh. attack was pretty cool. Yeah. Which he, it, it, thanks it's to tricky. her, he won. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, thanks to her. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I was talking to Eric, I'm like, honestly, my guys, I really hope Udo is still alive. Same. I do <laughs> like hope she's alive. the fact that she has ties with his ancestors and the fact that she lived just to kill. Like her first life, her first run in life was just killing. Mm -hmm. And then she was blamed for all the assassinations. She was basically framed yeah. and then killed herself. So hopefully, uh, not not that Okus is going to take responsibility for his what his ancestors did, but he might be like, hey. You can have a second chance. Let's let's try let's try to make you live life a different way. That unless, way you know life is worth living, other than killing. Unless she's dead. Unless she's dead. But hopefully <laughs> she gets a second shot because of her and her curse technique. He won, and she is pretty cool. Yeah. And it's crazy how Gege has come up with these characters and just shown them and like given them just a little bit, and already they're like really cool. Like we've got Higuruma, we've got uh, the comedian Takaba. Takaba, we got Uro, we got Ishigori. Like those are cool characters, bro. Like what? Yep. And the fact that he just introduced them and already like. I don't know. Like, they're really cool. Like, Udo, her technique proved to be what he needed to defeat Ishigori. But Ishigori just made Okutsu realize, hey, there's more to fighting than just throwing fists. Yeah. Like, hey, it can be fun. And maybe with Udo, hopefully she's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe with Udo, he can, you know, help someone. Yeah. And then have a comedy romance with between, <laughs> between Maki and Udo. <laughs> I still ship Maki in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the ship right there. Yep. That is the ship. So no matter. Udo lives or Udo dies. <laughs> as long as Maki is still She'll around. still lose. <laughs> Either way. Now we know a little bit of how uh, Toto feels like. Now Yuta understands what Toto feels like when he's fighting people. He's like, yes, brother. Come on, brother. Bing it. <laughs> Ishigori is in freaking down. And he's like, hey, my brother. <laughs> Finally, this has all come to a uh, close for Yuta's uh, fights and his sort of arc that he's had. It just showed how powerful he is. It really it's, powerful. It was fun. It was fun. I will be really upset if someone just comes in and just <laughs> kills Yuta next chapter. I would be <laughs> that, that pissed. Would be, oh I would be absolutely pissed, I man. think this is the weakest he has been in a while. So whew, if anybody, if any weak fodder was watching this fight like we were, and they're like, man, let's not mess with that. And now he's weak. He's emptied out. They're like, 
because essentially he's he's a plot device just like Gojo is. He's the strongest. So, Currently, he is the strongest. And you can't have uh, well, like if it's if you're gonna start to switch the focus now on your main character, like you can't have someone overshadowing him. Mm -hmm. So he's gotta. But hey, maybe we have seen a few mangas where it seems like there's dual char main characters. That's true, Just and he was the he was the protagonist for Zero. So yeah, he was the original protagonist. Don't get that twisted. <laughs> so Yuji can go to hell, <laughs> literally. <laughs> well, maybe in the future, Yuji does get taken over. I know because it's all like, all right, bro, now I'm the main character. Yeah. I'm going to take you out. <laughs> that would be the craziest. We this is, one of, this is one of our theories because Yuji has told Yuta and Megumi, he's like, hey, if Sukuna takes over and I can't get regain control, y'all got to take me out, bro. But he and, specifically told Yuta, he's like, I think you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and in pure, like greatness it would be to have your your former main your character former protagonist from zero take out your your protagonist in your new story hey, hey. <laughs> and it ends that way jujutsu kaisen that. zero currently as of this recording jujutsu kaisen zero is the 19th best-selling anime film of all time in japan and the number 10 anime japanese uh film of all time Omedeto. Worldwide, worldwide. Omedeto, Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> His popularity is growing, so I don't think fans would mind. I certainly don't mind because it was a great movie. But still, you know, Shounen tropes, you already have Megumin that has the semi main character, yeah. like Sasuke to Naruto. Yeah. So most likely it's just going to be Yuji or Sukuna versus Megumin at the end, but I wouldn't mind Okutsu. Goodbye. That's it. All right. That was Jujutsu Kaisen. Now let's get into the craziness that has still been going on with the piece of one or one piece. This week's chapter bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Mate, come on, mate. Bonkers. Again, as we mentioned last time, if and I mentioned last time, if you were already mad with what you the little bit that we saw in the last chapter all right guys let's take it to the next level yeah bro you're going to be livid bruv absolutely livid bruv but now we're at the rooftop and uh kaido is saying i'm glad uh, he again he's like i'm glad you're not dead bro I, I thought that last hit killed you and then luffy's like i thought it did too i thought i was dead too but I, i'm like as livelier as ever bro i'm yeah. as energetic and i'm good to go <laughs> They're still continuing on their fight, and uh, Luffy still maintaining his his newest form, his Gear Fifth or Slash, his Awakening. And then Kaido mentions that he's like, "Well, based on what I'm seeing and the, your surroundings, bro, being all warped, I guess this is an awakened fruit. Yeah. You've awakened your fruit. So, like, okay, my guy. So you've wake, awakened your paramecia, but and he gets mad." <laughs> And she lodges at Luffy, but the way you look is more of a freaking Zoan. <laughs> like, why did he get mad at that? I don't and know. Then, so you'd think, you'd think that because because Kaido mentioned this, that Luffy now knows that his fruit may not be a paramecia. But there was a little speech bubble for Luffy, and he said, "Hmm." <laughs> He's like, "What are you talking He's about? Like, Wait, what you say?" And then Kaido bit him. So I don't think he still knows. Nah, he's like, man, this old man's still drunk. He's found in a bunch of nonsense. He's like, but I guess this isn't uh, Kaido's first round against the, an awakened fruit because he's like, well, I've seen this before, <laughs> and I've seen what you're becoming before, and that usually happens to Zoans, not someone with a paramecia. So yeah. you're all bonkers right now. I got no time for this, chomp. <laughs> So he bites him, and yeah. not only does he bite him, but he's and then even Luffy's all like, "Ah, you bastard!" And then he starts chewing and swallows him. <laughs> yeah, he swallows him. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, fine." And he, you you see the gulp. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you see his body, and it starts zigzagging. Do do do. He's like, "Ugh, <laughs> what's happening?" And just to recap, Luffy is essentially making his power or affecting other people everything around everything him, around him because at first he's zigzagging him and then he while he that's happening that means luffy is bouncing around inside of him yeah and all of a sudden you see gomu gomu no balloon <laughs> Fusen. so he expands and he's a balloon inside of him and so kaido he's in his dragon form so all you see is kaido like fat yeah like you ever seen a snake 
eat an animal <laughs> that's what that is essentially what it looks like very round what i found what made me really laugh about this is that you can still see his little arms and legs sticking yeah. out of kaido and i think his head a little bit yeah i was like that's kind of gross it's that extremely gross <laughs> and then kaido's all like hey you're supposed to be the rubbery one not me <laughs> and this again he's inferring to his awakening affecting kaido's body and apparently at this moment as well Yamato and Mononosuke arrived at the roof and then Yamato looks up up and she's all like what is that oh that's Kaido what is that form is that a new form yeah I've never seen that Mononosuke is supposed to be trying to keep Onigashima afloat yeah like what is he doing he's not doing his job he's, he's totally just distracted there. so if, if it turns out to be the case that at the end of this fight he's all like or, or they feel Onigashima falling he's all like, oh, right again it shows his inexperience and his yeah. eight-year-old child mind because i don't think at this moment he's like uh, 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 no. made a bunch of clouds and came back he's like it'll be safe for now no. and came back i don't no, think, I think so. he got distracted and he forgot <laughs> <laughs> we get a view inside of kaido and it's pitch black and then there's these two <laughs> white dots and luffy's all like oh i see a pair of exits <laughs> look at that light and then we get a shot of of kaido on the outside and this is one thing that threw me off i was with the fact that i don't care about like what what luffy does i'm yeah. just gonna accept everything that happens but in this one instance luffy's arms shoot out of his eyeballs and grab his freaking nose, nose. <laughs> kaido's nose and i'm like hmm <laughs> hmm so at this moment, I'm like, did he just like pierce his iris? <laughs> pierced his eyes. He made him go blind for a brief second. <laughs> and you just hear Gomu, Gomu, Gomu no rocket or escape rocket. Yeah, escape rocket. And just pew, she shoots himself out of his Because as soon as the arms came out of his eyes, like Kaido was like, what? He opened his mouth. He used a escape rocket to shoot out. And his arms came back. It's not that his eyes, like his arms, his eyeballs are here. Mm -hmm. His mouth is here. It's not that his arms like came out with him. I think it just like they circled came back, back and he came into out his, his arm. Mouth. Yeah. But still, we get a shot of Kaido. His eyes are okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. So, like, hmm. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, okay. Questionable. Questionable. Yeah, that, that was, I was like, okay, Oda. How? <laughs> <laughs> this is the one time I'll question you in this chapter, but then again, I'll question him later. <laughs> but a bigger question later. But then. We get a shot of Luffy and he's just having fun. He's laughing. Yeah. And then we see him suck in a bunch of air. And I guess he was sucking so much air in that it, he floats all the way up to the clouds. <laughs> and why? Because we see Gomu Gomu no giant. Giganto. Uh, yep. Uh, and he's literally, it's like the coolest panel of Luffy. And he's literally like, ah basically like this is the pinnacle this is what we've been getting parts and pieces this entire time like ever since his uh gear third power ability and making his arm into a giant we've got an instance of him making different body parts different limbs yeah. but never everything has a hole so this is the first time that we see luffy and now his entire body is a giant freaking huge and he's and he's still in the sky he's coming down from the clouds so he's coming down like he's about to stomp <laughs> at kaido. kaido and kaido again it's in his dragon form so he's floating this is done the ultimate technique this is ultimate move this is finishing blow kind of useless kind of because kaido's all like oh you're giant Ooh. <laughs> he instantly dodges him and just bites him on the side <laughs> So that that attack did nothing. And Luffy's like, ah, <laughs> yeah, ouch. And then he grabs Kaido from his dragon head and then grabs his tail. And then he goes, Gomu Gomu no, jump rope. <laughs> Literally, the giant dragon that is Kaido is oh being used God. as a jump, jump rope. rope. Like that is, that is peak comedy right there. Like that is peak comedy in battle, bro. Like that is... He is now a jump Remember, rope they're fun. in the middle of the sky. So he like he's using him as a jump rope. What is he doing? Gonna make him dizzy? Well, no, not only was he using him as a jump rope, they're falling from oh. the sky. <laughs> so he's jump roping, coming down to the roof. <laughs> Boom. But before, like if that landed, I would assume it would collapse everything because they're both giant. But before that could even happen, Kaido, because he's holding his head, so his head isn't moving. Yeah. So Kaido's all like, blast breath. Bah! <laughs> he takes it directly in the face and you just pointed this out when yeah, you were reading it. It's a funny, funny little panel of Luffy's going 
Because, <laughs> you know, Blast Breath takes a second to charge up. So yeah. this entire time that he's charging it up and it's glowing, Luffy's like, slowly. I, I can't wait to see that anime. Yeah, Hopefully they do a slow-mo reaction. And it shoots him in the face. Okay, so next what happens is he gets blasted. So he's falling down and he's completely smoked. He's like all charcoaled up. And he's falling down away from Onigashima from the roof. And then he's like, oh, man, that hurt. He's like, all right, that's it. And this is so one instance. But this is this is funny because in the in the fans translation, it's like it was a pun. He's like, this is the last straw. I'm like, ah, straw hat, ah, buddy. And his he makes his feet kind of go into wheels. <laughs> hey, hey, shout out Bed Boy, bro. He called it, bro. This is sort of Michelin man, bro. <laughs> So as he's using his wheels to come back up, Kaido's preparing his Conqueror of Worlds Ragnarok attack. Yeah, he, he came back into his hybrid form. Yeah. We're going to mention this. So he went from his dragon, and as Luffy was coming back up, back to his hybrid. He's like, Michelin Man. This is the closest we'll get to Michelin Man, my guys. So he goes from his feet, and once he lands, he readies his arm, and he's spinning his arm around like he's about to... He, he was about to do something, because he's yeah. just, Gomu no. And then... Conqueror of Worlds Ragnarok. <laughs> it's real good. His face literally stretches into into uh, the dome where everybody's at. Yep. He's like, wow. <laughs> and when it breaks in, he's still like, it goes into big. And he's like, ouch. And eyes everybody looks up. <laughs> yeah, his eyes are popping out. The first we get the fodder looking up like, what? And then we get all the side characters. We get Kaido. No, we get Kaido. We get Kid. Law, Nami, Nami Chopper. Chopper. I think Marco too, no? Yeah, Marco and uh, Otama. Yo, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all of them. <gasps> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so again, this is another instance because he doesn't do this often, but I think because Luffy's head came down, it's affecting he's being the environment. Affect, they're all being affected by his power. So that's why his, well, the main cast. Yeah. The fodder characters, they literally, like always, their, yeah, eyes, their eyes literally <laughs> stretched out. I'm still guessing that this is Luffy's power affecting them. And then ugh, stretches it back. And he's like stuck in the roof. He's like, eh, boop. <laughs> he pops it up. And then even Kaido's all like, this is straight out of a children's book, guys. <laughs> he's all like, what the hell are you, bro? <laughs> like, what is this? Like, what is going on, my guy? And then Luffy, he's all tired. He's all like, oh, I can still go. <laughs> So he, because he, he, and this is, this is interesting. I want to bring this up, but, um, so it's like his, he's normal. He's like, I can still, and then he looks like he gets old. He went from looking at his gear fifth form with his white flame hair mm -hmm. and his white look. And then it goes back to him. It was fading into black, yeah. his normal hair. Then he looks normal. And then he looks like an old man. Yeah. Uh, and Kaido says, Ugh. <laughs> he's like, what the hell are you? We've seen this transformation before. And it wasn't Luffy, but it was all the fishmen, the, the bad guys in on Fishman Island arc. They took the energy steroids. It turned their hair white. And as soon as they it, the effects let go, they all turned old. And there is a I'm thinking there is a reason why when because uh, they gave Luffy that box when they left as a gift. And it was the Tama. It was I remember the name, but it was just a box and it had the energy steroids in there. And when they went to Big Mom's Island, Stussy or Stussy was trying to get that box for a reason. And then when she opened, there was nothing in there. But those energy steroids, I feel like whoever made them were trying to Replicate. copy the effects of uh, Luffy's fruit. The, just the fact that he turned old and his hair turned white. I'm like, that's Ho that's Hody from from Fishman Island. His hair turned white. He was super strong and everything. And then it just kind of like it turned old. And I was like, so that was very reminiscent of it. It's a theory. Don't know if, you know, if that's actually the case, but there must have been something important about it, though. But I feel like it, it mimicked the effects of Luffy's awakening. So we already know that Rob Lucci said that the way he's using his abilities in gear second and third, it was wasting away his life. Coming back to this point, this brings up my point again, because Kaido says the whoa bro the way you're using this the, when you're using this power you're wasting away and then luffy mentions yeah i feel like i'm about to croak <laughs> like yeah bro i feel like i'm dying here <laughs> kaido mentions this like if you keep going the way you're going you're gonna die 
And then Luffy mentions like, you think death scares me at this point? <laughs> I'm like, well, it doesn't, bro. But again, you're going to die. <laughs> he's saying he's going to die at the end of this. And this kind of brings up another point. Kaido is seeing this. Kaido is experienced. Is he saying that, hey, kid, the more you use this power, the more it's killing you? Oh, because Kaido mentions like, but don't like you can die here. It's OK, kid, you can die here. But, you know, there'll be tales of you and your friends and this in war. this war, like the tales of you and whatever the effort that you put into this war will be told for generations. And then Luis replies just freaking awesome. He's like, well, when you die, all that's left is your bones. Yeah. So I ain't got time for that. And that was really cool because that's actually a lyric from uh, Bing Sake in the song. It actually says, uh, basically what luffy said and i was like that's interesting like that's really cool what a cold line from luffy is like nah bro let's go and then he mentions a few names like right mononosuke right otama right kinemon and then he goes right pedro <laughs> r.i.p and then he's like uh, oh and kaido gets ready he's like he's getting his th another like thunder boggle or ragnarok ready and then luffy's all like come on heartbeat you know what to do <laughs> come on now boom boom <laughs> It's basically what he did. He said, come on now. Ba Boom. <laughs> and he's like, ah, there it goes. <laughs> and he instantly goes into gear fifth or his awakening. I'm like, yeah, your heart's not supposed to do that, my guy. You're definitely killing yourself. I forgot whether um, Kaido did Thunder Bagua or Ragnarok, but he hits Luffy. And because he went into his gear fifth, his freaking face takes the shape of his attack, the spikes, the club or whatever. And I'm like, hey, shout out to Okubo. He copied the uh, the the son from Soul Eater. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what he you looked are, like. Yes, you are right. That's nice. What a coincidence, or if not. Yeah, but that was funny as heck. Before the attack hit him, Yamato popped out from where she was hiding. She's like, Luffy, watch out. And then he went into gear fifth. It hits him, and like his face turns into the club and the spikes. And even she's like, what? And then like he, he started, he like after he gets hit, he's walking away. Ugh. His face is still in that form. Oh, when he got hit, it still hurt him. He was like, ouch. <laughs> Let me let me uh, run back a little bit, cut back a little bit to a, a little extra that Kaido said. He when Luffy was like worn out, he was all like, "Dang, he has conquerors hockey, he has armament hockey going for him, and he's controlling his whole environment." When he came back into his gear fifth, yeah, and he's all like, "Damn, this guy is like so versatile. It's like I've never seen anything like this." Yeah, he he had said, "I've never seen a fighting style so free." And oh, I was crap. like. Oh, see, at least I said this afterwards because that he says this right after he hits him because he launches yeah. Luffy. And before uh, Luffy um, hits, he's like, well, this kid just has a lot of things like he has the most freedom in this, in, like in the fighting, fighting style, style that he has. <laughs> he hit Luffy in the face that he could swings back around and hits him from his head on yeah. top. <laughs> but because of his awakening, what happens is, is that he doesn't make a crater. He, he it comes down with him. It bounces. It goes down with him and it just shoots him back up. But it does like leave like a big stop. Yeah. Like his, his, his body got turns so funny. He's like, like an accordion. Just yes. <laughs> his body basically gets squished like an accordion. And, but the floor bounces him right back up like a trampoline <laughs> and then there was a rock and he, he was being launched towards that big rock that was standing there and what happens to that rock becomes a trampoline it goes boing and then he go he's he's like like pushing in he's like three two, two one pew! <laughs> and he's like hurling like a helicopter like yeah. he's just swinging around and around and around and then that's when kaido's all like damn this kid has like even with all that I am the strongest. I'm still the strongest. Yep. There is no one that can take me down. And he's all like conqueror of worlds. Conqueror of worlds. That's like he gets it ready, but before he can even get it ready, Luffy in this entire time is propelling his arms like a helicopter. <laughs> and one of them, he launches and it hits Kaido. Right. And it hits right. through Kaido. It hits through Kaido. So the way that Oda Drip made it seem yeah, basically he like just headshotted him, bro. Like so Kaido's we dead, bro. Get, we, <laughs> We do get a sh uh, front shot of Kaido's face and it looks like his face is caving in. But then we get a back shot and Luffy's hand <laughs> went through, through him. I'm like, ah. And then <laughs> he pulls it back and we get a shot of Kaido's face going down, like the back of his head going down. Yeah. And there's like no damage. Like it's fine. There's no hole or anything. And then Kaido just goes down and Luffy's all like, I'm having the time of my life, dude. <laughs> 
I'm like, did he just kill Kaido? <laughs> he just punched a hole through his freaking head, dude. I was yep. like, oh my goodness. And that's how this chapter ends. Dang. With just him saying, hey, I'm having so much fun. I'm in time of my life. Yeah. And it's, oh my goodness, this has been one of the most wild fights. And it's just been so entertaining to read. And the goofiness of it is just great. It just adds it just adds luffy's character to the fight and it's just like this is this is this is this is what for me makes one piece great like this is just having fun with the story man I was just yeah like, all of is... his powers are really fun and really unique and it's it's hard like it's already hard enough to damage him because he's made out of rubber but you know this, his enemies have hockey armament hockey you can still so hurt him that so he's still getting out. hurt so he's getting hurt but now adding the fact that he's awakened and now his surrounding is rubbery and he could bounce off of it which lessens the attack that's better for luffy yeah so the people are there like oh luffy's so op and he's not getting any damage and no no, no. You idiots he's getting damaged every he's time he's getting damaged every time because of the hockey and then as jt mentioned he's just being very versatile with his uh with the uh, the environment and on top of he's in a waking zone so he has a little bit more stamina than before so he's still getting hurt He's just being, he's just able to last longer now. So. so, so far, Oda is still working within the lines of rules that he's already set. He set for himself. Yep. He set it up. He already knew what he was going to. So he already set them up beforehand. So stop complaining <laughs> for that, for his power. Stop complaining for that. But I, what I would understand, will understand, is if you complain about how, how is it that he punched through Kaido and how is it that he is, his arms went through his irises i don't know guys <laughs> i don't know either. that's one thing I'm, I'm confused about how because even if he what would make sense to me is if he punched through kaido and his punch made his face stretch out along with his arm i would totally get that but how is it that he's passing through things yeah even if someone has a defense so strong that they can't be uh, like what there was a diamond dude that was with the white beard pirates i think remember that guy uh Jozu, yeah yeah if luffy fought him and his awakening like i think he would be able to punch through his defenses so it's kind of like um udo <laughs> jujutsu kaisen where she's able to punch through anything with her power yeah i don't understand how his um rubber abilities work with that so yeah to me i i see the point guys but let's let someone ask Oda and, and SBS, SBS, which they most likely are going to. So we'll, we'll most likely either get an answer in SBS or like one of the color watches. Yeah, Cause that's like the that. only one thing. If I have to be iffy on something, that's the only thing, honestly. Yeah. So, but he's, he's always been at good at explaining, especially through SBS. So anytime you want to call BS and you're this far along in hey, try to ask Oda in SBS. Yeah. Try to ask Oda or go read some SBS when on your free time and you'll most likely find an answer to your question that you've been thinking if you if you have a question just literally google it and just search it up just type in your literal question and you'll probably find a q a and sbs yeah that he's mentioned before and if you don't have an answer to your question write in an sbs it's possible it is possible whether or not you get chosen well that's up to chance and luck but uh, but yeah, it's been possible. Not only Japanese people have been chosen, but foreigners have also been chosen. You just have to have someone translate into Japanese. And I think they in. do it. The, the company does it. I don't know. I like don't if know New Japan does that, then yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> then should we just do yeah. it too? Oh my god. <laughs> so, any final thoughts on what you expect for the next chapter? I expect nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> ever since he punched through his face I, anything is possible <laughs> really but my biggest point again is that there's a price everybody's calling bs or a lot of people are calling bs on luffy's new abilities and i think it is wasting him away because why else would he turn super old <laughs> <laughs> oh one one quick thing before like speaking of weird faces i like when everybody's face was popping out everybody had a shocked face like even kid had a shocked expression yeah. except for law he was gritting his teeth it was like what? he was holding back so much but your eyes couldn't hold back bro his eyes still popped out but he was gritting his teeth he had like a serious it face was weird but his eyes still popped out that was, was so funny. weird i found that really funny he's like you are not immune to the Luffy yep, effect. <laughs> yep, he's all like, you tried, bro. You tried. <laughs> and it's it seems like a law thing to do. He's like noticing their eyes popping. Not me, not me, bro, not me. 
I just wanted Zoro like he's dead on the floor and his eyes <laughs> the one eye. I do I I yeah same as you I expect nothing it's all up in the air at this point I just do hope we get some kind of something on Zoro next chapter hopefully <laughs> he just it'd be funny he just draws a panel of him just still like that <laughs> but not even like colored just shadowed just like <laughs> like boom <laughs> Doom. Oh, if Brooke finds him first and he sees a spirit running around in circles. <laughs> hey, bro, get back in there. <laughs> and then Brooke's like, oh, what up, cuh? What up, death? What up, cuh? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Nah, so... You could go, death. You could go. I got this. I got this, bro. I'll take <laughs> care of it. And like, yeah, you look like me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that this is the end of their fight? Because he went down. He did go down. Is it the end of their fight, though? I don't, mm, I don't want it to be yet. Maybe next chapter. Again, mythical zones have the most stamina. Kaido is Kaido's in his hybrid not, form. And Kaido hasn't awakened either. Is he awakened though? We don't know. Because not all awakenings control your surroundings. Yeah, they're different. Is he already using his awakening? But he did take a knee in the middle of the chapter. And he's like, oh, he's, he's tired out. Man. Tired so, and his fist just went through his face face yeah but luffy did say at the end i'm having fun so i don't think it's over yet so but hopefully the next chapter maybe it wraps it up kaido might get up he's like hey bro Oof. one last attack kid come on because luffy was like come on heart <laughs> come on if he hit him and then he's just like oh he's down and then luffy just because <laughs> mononosuke when when his gear fifth faded away mononosuke is like his voice, voice is, is also up. fading <laughs> poor bart's a little male bro Luffy's ever. So the Vivi cards, their papers, they don't replenish themselves. It's not magic paper. Like once they burn out, that's burned it. Out. So it burned out. So there's no, they don't, they probably don't know. <laughs> it did burn out. He probably did die. Yeah. If, if there's not even a hint of paper in that Vivi card, then he, if there's a little tiny piece that Bartolomeo's like just holding on to it, crying, then at least no, we know that he was close to death, but not completely dead. Yeah. But if Bartolomeo says, your BB card burned out, bro, then at that moment, we know that he did die. He did die. That's how we. That's how it can be explained. So. Yep. But who knows? Who knows, guys? Who knows after he uses this gear fifth, after it fades away, after the battle is over, and Luffy apparently looks like an old ass man, is he going to die? Who knows, man? Who knows? We'll or see. Or he's going to be at the death's door, and then Law has to operate on him or something? Who knows? No, please don't. He, I'm not saying he's going to give him the eternal youth power or whatever. I'm just saying he might like shock with it. <laughs> Clear. Clear. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> Beppo, bring this stuff, Beppo. I got the hint. Oh, man. But overall, really fun chapters this week. No My Hero. My Hero will be coming back next week. And Jujutsu will Is on be break. on a break. <laughs> so Jujutsu will be on a break. Homie deserves it. He's been giving us just banger back-to-back -back chapters. I don't know when the last time he had a break was, but he definitely deserves it, man. We will add other mangas into this swr because right now one piece is taking a lot of time yeah so we'll so see one piece has been on it it's been crazy and we will have more space after everything's calmed down so we will see what other manga we will add and on that note we hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you guys next time out mm -hmm.